Let us start on the topic on elements today. Elements are the basic blocks of matter. It is a substance which cannot be split into two or more simpler substances by any physical or chemical methods which includes heating, electrolysis and other chemical reactions. There are a total of 106 elements on Earth, of which 90 are natural while the rest are artificial. Many, many more elements are still being discovered as science and technology progresses. The most abundant elements in the universe are hydrogen and helium, and the most abundant element in the Earth's crust is oxygen. Inside an element, all the atoms are the same. For example, the element called sodium. So the atoms actually look like that in sodium. From here, we can see that all the atoms are the same. So we can therefore say that an element is a pure substance since it consists of only one type of substance. Okay. The elements are also all arranged in a periodic table. The imaginary zigzag line, which starts from between boron and aluminium in the third column, actually divides the elements into metals and non-metals. Okay, if you look at your periodic table, the zigzag line actually starts from the third column with boron in the middle of boron and aluminium. Okay, so the left side of the zigzag line will be all metals, while the right side of the zigzag line will be all non-metals. Each vertical column in the periodic table is called a group. For the group number, it has to be written in Roman numbers. Example, group 1 or group 2, etc. Okay. And elements in the same group will display similar chemical properties because they have the same number of electrons on the outermost shell. Each horizontal row is called a period. The period number can be written in numerical numbers. And the first period starts with the row containing hydrogen and helium. Elements in the same period will show a gradual change from metallic to non-metallic properties as they shift from the left to the right. When we write the symbol of the elements, we have to bear in mind that the first letter has to always be capitalized while the other one is in the lower case. Take for example, magnesium. The first letter will be the capitalized letter M while the G will be in the lower case. Okay, let us now look at the properties of metals and non-metals. For metals, they are actually good conductor of heat and electricity. They are malleable, meaning it can be hammered into sheets and ductile as they can be drawn into thin wires. They are also sonorous, meaning it can produce a ringing sound when it's struck. It's high in density and it also has a metallic, shiny appearance. Let us take a look at some examples of metals. The first one, we have aluminium. Aluminium has a relatively low density, a little bit different from the other metals, and they can resist corrosion. Because of the low density, they are actually very light, and so they can be used as air, they can be used to make aircraft bodies. Copper can conduct electricity and it does not react with water. Therefore, they will be good to make into alloys such as brass and bronze. Brass is actually made up of copper and zinc elements, while bronze is actually made up of copper and tin elements. Zinc will be good for making batteries and rooftops. Magnesium will be good for making medicine and fireworks. Mercury is actually found in our thermometer and fluorescent lamps. Silver can help to reflect light. Iron conducts heat well, so we can make it as cooking utensils, and for tin, they are usually used for coating food cans, which will protect the steel from being corroded by the food. Okay, let us look at the non-metals now. Non-metals are actually poor conductors of heat and electricity. They are brittle and snap easily. They are non-sonorous, meaning they do not produce a ringing sound when you struck it. They have a low density, 
and they are dull and have a non-metallic appearance. Some examples of non-metal include carbon, which can come in the form of diamond, which is hard, or graphite, which can conduct electricity. Bearing in mind that graphite is the only non-metal that can conduct electricity. The sulfur is also a non-metal and it can be used for drugs or insecticide. Oxygen is another one which supports combustion. Nitrogen gas is good in the formation of plants and animal proteins and fertilizers. While iodine is used as an antiseptic to kill germs and medicine. Hydrogen gas has a very small density, so it's used for rocket fuel or making margarine, etc.